Good morning and welcome to the Clinko podcast for the 21st of August. It's been a bad week for equities um, and the big question on everyone's lips is where's the growth gone? So we've had the Chinese devaluation in response to their worsening economy. Uh, and then this week we've had the minutes from the FOMC meeting in July, um, which suggested a more dovish approach to interest rates um, and, and in a way confirmed the, the sort of elongation of this cycle with low growth and low interest rates. Um, so that's caught a lot of people out in the market. So the expectation that rates would continue to go up this year um, has, has now reversed. So expectation of interest rate rise in the US in September has fallen from 48% to 32%. That's a very big move in a week, um, with only 62% of the surveyed expecting uh, a rate rise in December. Um, so, so that's a big shift, and that's why markets are moving quite rapidly at the moment. Um, actual data on the ground in the US this week has been pretty good. So home sales were up 2% uh, to an eight-year high, and the Philly Fed Manufacturing Index uh, was up 2.6% in August, which reads across to an ISM number, which is north of 50, or about 52.8. So uh, that still suggests that the US economy is growing. So inflation expectations have fallen um, which has led more people to be buying bonds because clearly uh, if inflation is, is going down, uh, interest rates aren't going up and, and, and bonds are uh, a good position, a good place to be because your relative return has improved. So the US, uh, uh, UK 10-year uh, gilts are back to where or actually below where they were at the start of the year. Um, and, and as you can see here, I think the market was looking for an extrapolation of those lines. Um, as, as we went into lift off in terms of interest rate policy. Um, so this breaking of that trend has caused sort of major ra ramifications in markets this week. Um, looking at what the Fed is actually looking at in, in terms of their uh, um, decision making policy in terms of interest rates and, and what affected markets this week, they look at the five year, five year forward break-even rate. So, so this is what inflation will be in five years' time. And, and bearing in mind that their target rate for inflation is 2%, um, and we had gone above that 2% level when the oil price was rebounding early in the year and wage pressure was starting to come into the system, um, this, this fall in the oil price uh, and this stronger trade-weighted dollar because emerging market currencies have weakened, including China, um, has led to that break-even rate falling quite, quite sharply this week. And it's now back at that 2% target rate, um, which puts questions into the mind of the Federal Reserve whether they need to raise rates uh, at this point. So that's uh, affecting sector performance. So what we've done here is we've looked at the period when US inflation expectations were falling. So if we go back this period, uh, which is shown over this, this period from uh, the middle of um, uh, uh, basically the second half of 2014. Um, and as you can see here, during that period, as one would expect, the basic materials and the oil price and the oil sector were, were deteriorating because part of the, uh, the, the, the reduction in inflation expectations was because of those commodity prices falling. Um, but you saw good performance in technology, healthcare, financials, um, utilities, um, uh, and that was because um, they benefit from lower interest rates in terms of the valuation, uh, in terms of the discount rate on the valuation, in terms of healthcare and technology, that's high growth stocks in a low growth environment. Uh, financials were interesting because uh, logically they shouldn't benefit from um, uh, falling inflation rates um, because you know, they should benefit from higher rates, but that's more of a valuation call. Uh, and utilities were beneficiaries because their relative valuation gets better if you're getting less in the bond market, which is what's happening as bond prices go up and, and yields go down. So, so that's you know, probably something that, that, that you know, one would expect to uh, continue uh, over this next few weeks as people continue to worry about inflation rates. Uh, one of the other interesting pieces of data this week was the IEA uh, survey, which again pointed to the fact that the oil price has been dropping because of oversupply rather than a lack of demand. So that's further evidence to say that perhaps what we're going through in this growth scare is similar to what we went through in the second half of last year. Um, and um, you know, it was more of a supply issue in terms of the 
the uh, price of commodities rather than a global growth problem. But at the moment, significant questions about that because the Chinese economy is clearly slowing faster than uh, the market expected because we've had this surprise devaluation from, from the P PBOC. So this is just looking at uh, what the market did when inflation expectations started to turn round uh, and started to rise again. So you know, if we, if we look through this and we, we think that you know, we're still in a cycle of, of growth and, and the Fed will look to raise rates at some time this year, um, then, then I think we can expect a return to this sort of market. Um, and again, you know, in this environment, you would see utilities underperform uh, because rates are going up. Um, uh, you see financials outperforming, you see healthcare outperforming. So this was the sector performance during this rally uh, in, in inflation expectations. Um, so what we're looking for in portfolios is uh, sectors that are performing in both of those environments. So um, you know, financials are, are obviously uh, part of that. I think uh, the consumer space uh, it has been part of that. Um, and, and, and those are the sort of areas that, you know, and healthcare clearly, uh, are areas that we're fully weighted in. Um, so um, in terms of what we're looking at next week, uh, we've got BHP Billiton on Tuesday in terms of Killick stocks. Uh, we've got WPP on Wednesday. Uh, other than that, it's a fairly quiet week for markets. So thanks for listening. Have a good weekend.